called? So like maybe three, two, one, when you're about ready to go. Oh, we are on. We're on. We're on. Yes, Excellent. sir. Okay, we're on. Hi, my name is Michael Harris. Welcome to Falling Up Radio. Well, I guess it's not just radio anymore. It's also video. So you're going to have a chance to see this both video and radio. So what Falling Up is really about is really about bringing guests that help inspire us as individuals to really live life to our fullest. Hi, my name is Michael Harris, and I'm actually reading this because I haven't done this for a while. We're starting back up again, so I'm really super excited. I'm going to introduce our guest in a minute. But I'm a host of your show, and as a business and personal coach, I help others create a life of really their dreams and their visions. I'm also the author of the number one best-selling book, Falling Down, Getting Up, and contributing author to another book, number one book, Expert Success Solutions. If you want a free copy of the Falling Down book, just it's really simple. Just go to fallingdowngettingup.com, and you can uh, download a, a copy immediately, an e-book, and also get one sent to you. But anyway, I want to get past that because I'm so super excited to have our guest here today. Um, I met our guest, um, I'm not going to tell you much, well, no, I'm going to tell you as much as I can about him. Um, I met him earlier this year at a business conference. I, I had, um, knew a little bit about him, but I didn't really know anything about him, but I, I knew he was going to be at the conference and I wanted to meet him. So our guest, Vince Roundtree, is going to talk to us about what? About plant based nutrition. Vince is, is a expert at this and he's going to tell you how he got into it, but I want to read a, a little bit of, about him bio. There's so much to read. I'm not going to read everything, but Vince really helps people with diabetes, high blood pressure, other chronic disease, high cholesterol, really move through the, the healing uh, with plant-based nutrition. Um, he's really an expert. He's been trained through Emory University, uh, Cornell University. He's certified as a food life instructor, on and on and on. He's got a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering. This guy's one smart dude, and I think it's somebody <laughs> that we really need to um, listen to. So, Vince, Vince Roundtree, welcome to our show. I'm really happy to have you here today. Thank you very much, Mr. Michael B. Harris. It is a pleasure and an honor to be in your presence. <laughs> that might be a little bit thick, but okay, we'll go with it anyway. <laughs> mean every word of it. I mean yeah. every word of it. Yeah. So, Vince, I know we could talk all day long and more about this subject. And sure. we might even have to have you come back, come back again sometime, even before we started this interview. Because I know there's so much here. Deal. But one of the things that, that I would love to hear about is really like how you got into plant-based nutrition. Um, did you have some health issues? Um, and can you maybe tell the, the, the listener, the viewer, a little bit about your story and about what happened? Yeah, so I have always been intrigued with the link between uh, food and health. When I was a kid, you know, mom said, eat spinach, it'll make you strong. And I said, well, give me the spinach. I really don't care how it tastes. I want to be strong. And I've always kind of been that way. I always kind of wanted to eat healthy. Um, and was always, you know, an, an athlete, um, you know, exercised on a regular basis and wanted to uh, uh, eat in a way that would maximize, uh, you know, performance on the field. And so in 2011, uh, I went in for a regular physical and the doctor said that you've got high cholesterol. And I was like, that's, well, why, why can you know, how, how can that be? I mean, you know, I eat mostly, you know, chicken and fish and I don't do a lot of beef. I don't do a lot of pork. I don't do a lot of fried food. I don't eat French fries. I don't drink soda. You know, I'm doing all the things you're supposed to do. Why is my cholesterol high? But, and, but, but, so, so you did eat chicken and all that growing up though. Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah, McDonald's, did you ever go there in high school? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of okay. fact, yeah, okay. as, a matter, as, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, uh, breakfast, you know, the, the old bacon, egg and cheese biscuit or the sausage biscuit with egg from McDonald's, I could <laughs> not decide which one I want. So I usually got one of each. And, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I definitely, I definitely ate that. But, uh, but other than that, I mean, I really didn't, I didn't do a lot of, a lot of pork, and I didn't do steak and beef, and I, and I really thought that that was, those were the most important things about eating healthy, or so yeah. I thought. Well, tell us more about what happened at the doctor. So when he gave me the diagnosis, uh, I asked him what I could do differently to make it come down, rather than taking these pills that he wanted to prescribe for me. And he said, basically, well, you've got a family history of high cholesterol, so there's not a lot you can do. I mean, maybe you can lose a few pounds, but it's in your family, so there's not a lot you can do about it. And that just... So, so are you overweight a little bit at this point, too? I, I mean, I'm six feet tall. I was about 190 at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was in the normal range, probably on the high end of normal. Um, uh, and, and so... At the time, when I got that, that diagnosis and he told me there's not much I can do, that was just the entry point for me to start looking because I didn't accept that answer. I, I, I looked at, I interpreted that answer as he didn't know, um, not that there was not a way. And so I started looking. And you know, when you look for things on the internet, this was 2011, when you look for things on the internet, healthiest way to eat. How do you eat to, 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 to treat heart disease? How do you eat to lower cholesterol? Everybody thinks they've got the magic bullet. I mean, you know, high carb, low carb, keto, you know, South Beach, and everybody says they've got the magic bullet. And so like, what do you believe? Like, how do you know what to believe? Because everybody says that their way is the right way. And so what intrigued me is when I found a YouTube lecture by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, who uh, said that he did primary research where he took patients that had severe heart disease, started off with 24 patients, um, and, uh, and put them on whole food, plant-based nutrition. Six of the 24 right off the bat said they didn't want to do it. And like, that's good. And that's your control group. And then the other 18 that did it, and then in his five-year follow-up report, 18 out of 18, their heart disease was either stopped or reversed. Wow. And I'm like, 18 out of 18? And then in his 12-year follow-up report, one of the 18 went back and started eating lamb chops and things. He needed open-heart surgery. So basically, in his, in his uh, report, and this is in his book, To Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, every one of his patients that did what he did they were able to either stop the progression of heart disease or reverse it. So when I saw that. What, what about the other six? What happened to man, them? Of the other six that didn't do it, a couple of them died. Um, there were a couple of strokes. Uh, and just all of them had further progression of the disease. None of them got better. Zero percent of them got, 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 got better. Wow. They all got worse and understand that this is what happens when you're treated with the best medical technology you know that the country has to offer and you can't beat plant-based nutrition so when i saw that no, no, I, I, I want to interrupt you for a, mo a, a moment all right because i know a little bit about this doctor and this doctor has had some uh fairly famous patients is that correct? Yeah, um, he uh, did did some work with Bill Clinton. I don't know if that may be the one that you're uh, yeah, pre up. President Clinton because of his heart disease, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And and he is just the most. I mean, I've I've met him several times now, and actually have done some work with him. And boy, I have met countless people at different conferences that told me they read his book, they called his office. And he called them back. Wow. I mean, I've met people that said that he called them back. And I mean, I've actually met a guy that said that he had open heart surgery scheduled, read his book. He called uh, and called Dr. Esten, Esten called him back 
And Dr. Esselstyn said, if you read my book and do what I tell you to do, you can, and, and, you know, and, and, he, and he sent Dr. Esselstyn his, he said, send me all your lab work, send him his lab work. If you do everything I say to do, you can cancel your, uh, your surgery. Wow. Because you don't need it. Yeah. And the guy did cancel the surgery. And just like everybody else that makes this change, the heart disease was reversed. So what what this patient did, or this uh, person going in for surgery, or is going to, essentially went to a plant-based diet. Is that correct? Yeah. So so what he did is uh, what what Esteban puts people on is whole food, plant-based nutrition, which means that you are eating foods in four uh, dietary groups, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. Legumes is anything in the pod, beans, split peas, lentils, anything grown in the pod. And you, you don't eat any animal-based foods. Nothing, as he says, with a mother or a face. No chicken, fish, dairy, milk, yogurt, ice cream, nothing that's, uh, no, no dairy products, nothing that comes from animals. And he also doesn't want people to consume any oil because we can talk about how oil damages the endothelium and artery health. Um, and so that's what he puts people, and he's very strict. I mean, he doesn't allow, because he's dealing with people who have literally heart disease, they're about to die. Sure. So well, t- tell us more about what happened again with your cholesterol when you went to the doctor. So, so it was Esselstyn's story that made me switch. And so when I read, uh, and when, when I, I saw his YouTube lecture, uh, and I read his book, I was like, well, this, I'm sure this will have to work on my cholesterol. So let's see what happens. So I did an experiment on myself. I went hundred percent whole food plant-based. It was August 5th, 2011. And I stopped eating all animal products and I went whole food plant-based. And in six weeks, my total cholesterol went from 240 down to 132. In six weeks. Six. That's six. Weeks. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. As in six weeks. Okay. Uh, from, uh, 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 from 240 down to 132. The LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, was at 170. It dropped to 78. So I dropped 100 points. In six weeks. Wow. My, uh, my weight, I dropped 20 pounds. I dropped 20 pounds. I went from like 190 down to 170. My blood pressure was 135 over 85. It dropped to like 117 over 76. All of this happened in six weeks. And I was blown away. I couldn't believe how effective this was. And so, in fact- The only change you made was the food. You didn't- Exercise more or do anything else, nope. just food. I was already exercising. The only change that I made was the food. And so, so no what, more McDonald's hamburgers or those breakfast things. No, man, that was I haven't had a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit ever since then. <laughs> as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you know, one of the things that I coach my uh, my clients on. So I, as you mentioned in my intro, I work with people that have you know high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type two diabetes. One of the things that I coach uh, clients on is understanding what your weakness is, you mm-hmm. know, because we all have foods that we're like, I got to have it, right? And, mm-hmm. and you've got these foods you look forward to. For me, it was bacon and eggs. And so whatever your weakness is, and you know what it is, the food that you're like, I got to have it. The best thing you could do is cut yourself off completely. Mm-hmm. Because you don't want it once. I mean, it's not very different than an alcoholic. Something that you know something about. When you are uh, an, an alcoholic, you can't just have one drink and think everything is fine. You can't do it. And when you've got that addiction for cheese and you've got to have, or you've got to have that chocolate. In my case, I love bacon and eggs. I would have bacon and eggs for lunch. I don't know if they've got Waffle Houses. I don't think they've got Waffle Houses in the West. They have Waffle Houses in the West Coast? Yeah, yeah, they're around. So I would go, occasionally I would have, I would go to uh, probably once a week or so, maybe twice a week I treat myself and go to Waffle House for lunch. Um, You know, I I would occasionally do my bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits for, for, for breakfast. I mean, I just, I love bacon and eggs. I would occasionally make it for dinner. Um, But, I never 
allowed myself to have it not even once because I know how badly I wanted it. Now, what happens is over time, you lose the taste for it. Mm. Today, I've lost the taste for it because uh, when my daughter was in college, she came, uh, when actually I started this, it was her senior year of high school when I started this. So it must have been in like three years later, because I think, I think it was her junior year, she uh, came home for spring break and she bought one of her girlfriends with her uh, from school. Mm-hmm. And, and she's like, dad, nobody makes bacon and eggs like you make bacon and eggs. Can you please make us your famous bacon and eggs? I said, baby girl, you know I don't eat that way anymore. She said, I know you don't, but just please, will you make it for me? You please? And, okay, so you guys out there, if you got daughters, you know that they are just, special people that can get you to do things you don't want to do. So I agreed. I gave in. All right. I'll make your bacon and eggs. And so and did you partake and eat too? I, well, I'm going to tell you what, I hated every phase of it. I really? hated, I hated buying it at the grocery store because the grocers knew me. I was the guy that bought all the fruits and vegetables. I hated buying it. I hated putting it into my cart. I hated <laughs> paying for it. Knowing I was supporting that industry. I hated cooking it. All right, I didn't even want to cook. I hated cooking it, and I cooked it. And, and then to watch my daughter eat it, she loved it. Her friend loved it. And I looked at it thinking, I know that I'm doing you harm. And I know mm. you enjoy the taste, but long term, I know what this is doing to you. And so I hated watching her eat it. And so I decided to taste a tiny, tiny piece of a smidgen of the, of the bacon and of the egg, less than a full forkful. I thought it was disgusting. Yeah. Unbelievable. I thought it was disgusting. I'm like, there's no, I don't, this is, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, in, in fact, um, you probably are aware of the work that Dean Orn, Dr. Dean Ornish has done. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, you know, Dean Ornish today, uh, and again, actually he was one of the, one of the, actually before Esselstyn, they were right around the same time, but he published his studies before Esselstyn did on reversing heart disease. He actually did that while he was in uh, medical school, actually. It was his first study on reversing heart disease with, uh, with, with plant-based nutrition. And he went on and reversed uh, prostate cancer. You know, today, he won't even do like a randomized control test for heart disease because he says it's unethical. Why would I, for a test basis, put patients on a food that I know is killing them? So that'd be like a random based uh, testing for d- drug addicts or alcoholics. Exactly. Say, okay, exactly. You, you, you five, you can drink as much as you want. Exactly. And you five can't drink anything and see exactly. which one gets better. That's a perfect example. You know which one's going to get better. It, it, right. So, it, I mean, it's literally unethical to give people something that you know is causing them harm. So today he won't, he, he won't do uh, trials on uh, heart disease or th- yeah, yeah. It would, I don't remember the name of his book, but I I read that book, and because of you know I I had my vascular condition, and he was one of the triggers that went oh maybe I should eat plant food too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's amazing. He, he he's amazing, and he's done so much work. I mean, of everybody, I heard him speak at a physicians committee for responsible medicine conference uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, this past July, uh, and it was the first time hearing him speak. And I've been going to these conferences since 2012 was my first one. And I go to a couple a year. Um, but this is the first time I heard Ornish, because Ornish is not one of the guys that tours and does a lot of speaking, but uh, uh, this one he, he, he did. And boy, the body of work that he's done is just yeah. unbelievable. I mean, in prostate cancer and heart disease and telomere length and Alzheimer's research. I mean, he just is doing just such a wide body of work on how plant-based nutrition uh, can reverse so many different things. Multiple sclerosis does some work on multiple sclerosis. Wow. And can you, um, a lot of our listeners or viewers may not be aware of the China study. And the China study is really a bulk of really great work around plant-based nutrition and what happened in China. Can, Can you maybe describe a little bit what that was about? Yeah, so uh, there was a, um, 
I don't know if you, uh, 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 a, a senior leader in China that, uh, that got sick with cancer and he commissioned a study uh, in the 70s to determine the relationship between environmental um, factors, uh, including food and a bunch of other things, uh, and cancer. And so uh, uh, T. Colin Campbell uh, was studying the same thing in Cornell. And so he was in, invited to do work with uh, some of the doctors in, uh, in, in China with this. And they went to, I, I believe it was a hundred different regions in China uh, and, and just studied hundreds of people per region. I mean, so they came back with this humongous data set uh, on the relationship between you know food and other environmental factors uh, and cancer, uh, and then that led to his uh, to his study that he did where he was actually able to turn cancer on and off in laboratory rats. I, I heard about that. It's like that he gave him, if I remember, it was casein, which is well, casein, within milk. Yeah, casein. Casein is the is the is the uh, protein in milk. What they did was they 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 uh, uh, gave the mice aflatoxin, which is which is carcinogenic, uh, and he did it to, to a, a, a random set of mice, and then they fed them casein at twenty percent, and watched uh, cancer grow, and then cut it back to five percent, and the cancer started to shrink. And then they they fed them up to twenty percent, and the cancer started to grow again, and then they cut the casein back to five percent and the cancer started to shrink. They were literally turning cancer on and off based on how much animal protein he fed these uh, mice. Uh, That's and amazing. I mean, you would think that everybody would know about that, especially in relationship to cancer. Well, dairy, well, casein, which is that main protein uh, and whey, but, but the, c casein and, and whey, those uh, animal-based proteins from dairy, Anybody that has got any type of cancer, literally, the first thing that they should absolutely do is cut out dairy. All dairy. Doesn't oh my matter. God. All dairy. I mean, yogurts and ice cream and sour cream and cheese and milk and in any form, that animal protein is toxic to, 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 to cancer because it, it, you, you, it causes your liver to produce IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth insulin-like growth factor one. And insulin-like growth factor one causes cancer cells to grow. They believe, wow. that, they, they believe that cancer cells have, uh, in, ha have receptors for this IGF-1. This IGF-1 feeds the cancer cells. Mm. And so literally the first thing that anybody should cut out the dairy, I mean, God cut out the dairy. In fact, you should cut out all animal products, but particularly dairy. Um, yeah. You know, because the, the, the most common causes, um, the most common forms of cancer, right? Breast cancer on women and prostate cancer for men, colorectal cancer, directly related to, to, to dairy consumption and, uh, and, and, and meats and processed And did, 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 did they see that really within the China study too? Like in some of these regional areas that they studied, did they see where um, uh, those that, that maybe consumed dairy had more of those type of diseases? I don't know, I don't recall if it got to the level of the types of cancer. Um, I know that the data, the data that they got back, it was, it was, it was correlated and, they, and they, they saw that correlation. Um, obviously any observational data uh, can only show correlation, doesn't show causation. Causation, you've got to do interventional trials, which is, uh, you know, which is where, which is what Elston did, right? You take somebody with the disease and then the intervention is you put them on uh, plant-based nutrition, and then watch what happens, right? So that's truly an interventional type of trial. What, uh, what T. Colin Campbell did was uh, an observational uh, epidemiological study, which, is, which, which will never uh, prove causation. It will only prove uh, correlation. Okay. Okay. So, so um, What, what, what else can, can you tell us about, like, I mean, you talked to us about how you went to the doctor, 
how you, you, you were suffering from high cholesterol, a little bit overweight, and how things changed for you. It sounds like that's been seven years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's and right. And how would you say your life today is better because of it? I, I, I feel, you know, I'm, 50, I'm 56 years old, and I, I just feel incredible. I mean, literally, I feel like I can do physically anything that I did, you know, in my teens and in my 20s. Yeah. Um, you know, there is, there is nothing more valuable than your health, right? I mean, there's your family, your health. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're laid up in a bed someplace and, you know, your quality of life means so much. Um, and to think that you have got the control over your health in a lot of ways. Now I understand certain people have things that are out of their control. I, I get that, but give your body the best possible chance of yeah. healing yourself. Can we guarantee? Obviously we can't guarantee it. Are there, are there people who are whole food plant based and they're still sick? Yes, but the odds are so much better if you do. Uh, because you, you you literally allow your body to heal itself by eating food that's nutrient dense and 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 calorically dilute right so you know there's no more nutrient dense food on the planet than vegetables and fruits you know but the level of micronutrients that that are in vegetables and and, and, and fruits and whole grains and beans is you, you can't beat that right so when you're eating those types of foods and unprocessed now, I always make the, dis the distinction between whole food, plant-based, and vegan. Vegan just tells oh, so, you- So there's a difference. There is a huge difference. Okay. There's a huge difference. Vegan tells you what not to eat. Mm -hmm. the, the vegans and the vegan movement is all about uh, animals and uh, not abusing animals and not doing harm to any animals. So for a vegan diet, a vegan diet just means don't eat anything that has harmed an animal. Okay. But French fries are fine. Potato chips are fine. Soda is fine. Uh, Oreo cookies are fine. Vegan cakes and cupcakes are fine. Sugar is fine. Oil is fine. And those foods are horrible for your health. So yeah. you can eat an unhealthy vegan diet and have heart disease and have high blood pressure. So, and so, so, so wait a minute, you can eat Oreos on a vegan diet? Yes. Wow, maybe I wanna go vegan. Yes, no you don't, because <laughs> it's not a healthy thing. And that's the thing, just because it's vegan does not mean it's healthy. And, and, and that's the thing that you have to understand. I mean, in fact, there's a lot of vegan restaurants. As this movement is growing, there are vegan restaurants that people think all I gotta do is eat vegan and I'm healthy. And one of the things you'll find is there are vegans that are very much overweight. Because, oh, absolutely. I've, I've seen them, seen it. And it's, and, it's, and it's because of the vegan junk food that's loaded with, you know, oils and sugars and processed foods. Where, where I want you to eat is not just vegan. Okay, so yes, I don't want you to eat animal products. But in addition to that, I want you to eat food that looks like it did when it was grown or when you're cooking it. It looks like it did when it was grown. So when you're eating the fruit that looks like fruit, the vegetables look like the vegetable. So that means eat corn, not corn chips. Potatoes, not potato chips. You know, uh, baked potatoes, not necessarily French fries because you dunked it in oil and you let it suck up all of that oil. Uh, oil is not a health food. Yeah. Coconut oil is not a health food. Olive oil is not I, a health I've food. I've heard a lot of stuff lately about coconut oil because it's, Marketed as such a great health food, but I've been starting to hear all these things that it's got more saturated fat than butter and all this kind of stuff. That it's actually worse for you than many other oils and butters, so to speak. All oils you should avoid. Right. Particularly any oil that is a solid at room temperature. Mm. Coconut yeah. oil is uh, there, it, its freezing point is around 76 degrees Fahrenheit. So that basically at room temperature is solid. Yeah. And, and any uh, oil that's solid at room temperature, like the bacon grease, right? You, 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 back, back in the days when, when, when you make bacon, you pour it out into a jar or something, let it sit on the counter, it turns solid. 
We, I, re, I remember doing that. Remember that? So yeah. if, if an oil is solid at room temperature, that means there's a lot of saturated fat in it and you don't want saturated fat. When saturated fat gets in your body, it gets absorbed into the bloodstream pretty quickly. As a matter of fact, if you took a blood sample, if you took a blood sample uh, after eating a, a burger and fries or after eating my favorite bacon, egg and cheese biscuit, if you took a blood sample and uh, put it in a test tube and just let it set for uh, you know 10 minutes and let it separate to the red blood cells at the bottom and there's a cuff in the middle and then there's white blood cells on top. Hmm. After you eat that meal, the white blood cell part on the top is cloudy. It's called lipemia. It's actually the fat that you just ate. It gets into the bloodstream versus if you eat a meal of any whole food plant-based without added oil and then take your uh, blood sample and let it set, you'll see the red blood cells at the bottom, the cuff in the middle, and the white blood cells top will be clear because mm-hmm. it doesn't have the saturated fat. So, so what, fat- are, what you're talking about, like next week is Thanksgiving, and we all know that it's easy to eat a lot of food at Thanksgiving. Yep. People stuff themselves, turkey and gravy and, and all these different things, and then they go sleep, asleep on the couch. Yep. Is that because of what you just described? It's because of a lot of things. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's full of saturated fat. Uh, it's, you know, the, it's the animal protein itself. Uh, and uh, all, all of those things damage what's called the endothelium. And the endothelium is the inner lining of cells in your arteries. It's one, it's one cell thick, it's right? It's one cell thick. That's exactly right. And it's, it's the inner lining of uh, cells in your arteries. Those endothelium cells produce a gas called nitric oxide when they're working properly. And that nitric oxide causes your arteries to expand and then contract. Anytime you eat something that's got saturated fat or, oil, or refined oil, you damage those endothelium cells. Endothelium. And when those cells are damaged, uh, the arteries don't expand and contract. Your blood pressure goes up uh, and your risk for heart disease and stroke goes up. And we've just accepted that, you know, in this country, heart disease is the number one cause of death. Number one cause of death. And we just accept it. Okay, so, you, you know, you got to get a stent or whatever. No, there are cultures of people that don't get heart disease. And we know based on Esselstyn's work and Ornish's work that if you have heart disease and you go whole food plant-based, if it's some type of coronary artery disease or ischemic uh, heart disease, which means some type of blockage in your arteries, that can be reversed. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. We've talked a little bit about this. You know, when, when I was, it was 1986 and I had blocked arteries in my legs, right? Peripheral vascular disease. Per- 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 and I didn't know anything at the time about plant-based nutrition. And it, you know, the, the, most of the vegan type people were the um, no leather, no nothing, right. stay away from animal type thing. Hippies, uh, Birkenstock. Hippies, daishikis, and, Birk- and Birkenstock. Yeah, right. And you know, they did bypass surgery on my legs. Um, and then a few months later, they wanted to do it again, and I wouldn't let them do it. And I ended up at, at the place called Pritikin Longevity Center. And when I went there, you know, I could barely walk. And within a couple of weeks, I was walking several miles. And my thought at the time was that most of that was because I was walking. But the Pritikin nutrition, the Pritikin food, was primarily plant-based. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, it didn't occur to me till later that eating the plant-based had just as much of an effect as walking. Probably more of an effect. Probably they, more than. Probably, probably more of an effect. Now, they, they, they do work together. Right. But if, but if you had to choose one, it'd be the food. Because, I mean, like the, the walking too, you, you get your calves working. That's right. Which is part of the, of the pump system, your heart and your two calves. You're getting the, the blood moving. And I, knew, I know that the endothelium in my arteries was all messed up. Yep. And now, 30 plus years later, I'm alive, but the doctors are dead. <laughs> you know, I mean, really. Well, what you had, peripheral artery disease, is the exact same pathology as what causes heart disease, same right. pathology as what causes strokes. Um, 
it, uh, and what it is 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 atherosclerotic plaque inside those arteries. Yeah. And see, uh, my dad had died of a heart attack. He was 59 a year prior to that. And my grandfather died at 52 before I was born of a heart attack. So I was already susceptible, genetically anyway, to that. Yep. And I've eaten some meat off and on over the years since then. But this last year, I recommitted myself last year. Even though I thought I was eating pretty good, I've gone back to just pure plant-based. Yeah. Yeah, basically what you are a living example of is the reversal of atherosclerotic plaque. Mm. Um, atherosclerosis is the process of the arteries getting clogged. Yep. And, um, and that, that process starts from saturated fats and cholesterol, lipids, uh, in the bloodstream uh, that those, those, those small LDL particles get into the subendothelium levels you know it gets into the thick the wall thickness of the artery uh and then it's that's kind of like an invasion and then that, that forms a foam cell and then white blood cells attack it and it kind of starts to swell up so the artery the wall of the artery starts to swell up and as that artery wall swells it's taking up space so that blood is not flowing through the way that it should because I didn't have high cholesterol. My cholesterol was 150 at the time. It was low. Yeah, that can be. Yeah. Yeah, that can, that, that can be. That but can I, be. I ate a lot of chicken, and a lot of flank steak growing up. We had a barbecue on the, on the outside on the patio. Yeah. Barbecue, and we just eat meat all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And cheese. I, I would eat blocks of cheese, you know. That, that alone will do it. Yeah. That, uh, that alone can cause a problem. Yeah. Yep. In fact, if you would like, it may take me a half a second. I can show, I'm actually was working on a presentation here where I can show your audience. If you're at all interested, what that lipemia looks like. Yeah. Uh, show us. See that. Yeah. Okay. okay cool. We've got about 10 minutes left or, or so, but go ahead and show it. Then I've got another question for you too. Okay. Okay. Give me one second here. Uh, and let me put this on and I'm going to share my screen for a second. Perfect. Uh, and let's take that and let's do share. And let's see if I, if I do this, does that blow it up? Okay. Oh, this is great. So what you are seeing now is, okay. So uh, what you are, wait, let me see what you, let me, let me check to see what you're seeing now. So do you, so do you see uh, this it says what your blood looks like after eating? Yes. Okay. So uh, when you look at the left and it, it says uh, your blood after eating rice and beans, and then on the right, your blood after eating uh, fat and oils, basically that's after eating like a hamburger and fries, that thick, that thick, dark, you know, on the, on the top there, you're actually seeing saturated fat in your blood. That's it looks what like it looks sludge. Like. That's exactly, and in fact, we call it sludge blood. Really? We call it sludge blood. Because not only uh, does, is, it's, it's, that is the material that when it's flowing through your arteries, that it gets into the artery walls and it what starts the atherosclerotic uh, plaque growing uh, and that's what you had growing uh, in in the peripheral arteries of your legs. Wow. It was because of that. But when you stop eating uh, animal-based foods, then the saturated fat goes, oh, you, you, you don't, you don't, you're not eating it anymore. So then your blood looks like it does on the left-hand side. And when you're eating foods like that, you don't have that saturated fat. And then you give your body time for the uh, atherosclerotic plaque to reverse. Wow. So it's pretty anyway. incredible. 
Yeah, it just so happens yeah. that I had that. Yeah, I had I'm, that I'm glad you, you showed that to us. Yeah. Um, in, in the time remaining, again, I, I have another question. And then the question is, for the viewer listener, are there a couple of simple things that they might be able to do to start to eat more plants? Yeah, so- Is that the, the right question? Yes, that is, that is the right question because, you know, many people after they, you know, they, 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 they hear this uh, of what I'm saying that, you know, they're not going to make, you know, a lot of people, they're not going to make the, the full change to uh, a plant based, even though I say, try it for a couple of weeks to see what happens. You know, mm -hmm. I would, I would say that, but if you don't want to do that, then every, every piece of plant based food that you can eat that you re replace meat, cheese, dairy, milk, eggs, the better. So let's start with, now this is a weight loss tip that works like a charm. Here's a good way to start. In the morning, I want you to only eat fruit and drink water. Now, when I say eat fruit, I don't mean just like a little side, a couple of grapes and you know a couple of you know a, a wedge or so of a cantaloupe no i mean it's fine to eat an entire cantaloupe or if you want to eat a cantaloupe and a half eat a cantaloupe and a half i mean eat a whole honeydew melon or if you want to mix honeydew melon and cantaloupe together that's great or eat a quarter or a half of a watermelon so and i'm 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 writing this this down okay so fruit and water only until noon Really? Yeah. And that, and that way, so what that, what that will do is uh, fruit is one of the lowest calorie dense foods on the planet. So you can eat it until you get full and you still haven't consumed many calories, but you have consumed a lot of nutrients. So like I, I eat like a lot of oatmeal in the morning. You're saying I shouldn't have oatmeal? No, 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 no. Actually, the way that I do it is I eat my oatmeal for lunch. But I mean, I get it. And there's nothing to matter with oatmeal. There's, no, there's nothing to matter with oatmeal. Um, and you know, oatmeal, I totally recommend oatmeal is great. Uh, when we, but when I recommend oatmeal, I always recommend getting the plain oatmeal with nothing in it, just either rolled oats or steel cut oats. And then yeah. you put in the seasonings to make it taste good. You can right. put in cinnamon and apples. You can put in, but I love it. Now, some of the healthiest foods on the planet are berries and green leafy vegetables. So I always put mixed berries in my oatmeal and uh i also add my uh my seed combination mm. two tablespoons two tablespoons of flax seed two tablespoons of hemp seed and two tablespoons of chia seeds so i put that in my oatmeal as well uh and then some cinnamon and then blueberries and mixed berries and then I, I love blueberries i'll like cook up the oatmeal and then i'll dump it in and then i'll put some of the other food on top afterwards and then did you add like almond milk or hemp milk or anything or do you just yeah well i use, I, I do i do steel cut but i mean you can do rolled oats as well but i do steel cut that takes a long time but i work out of my house so it's not a big deal if yeah. i didn't work out of my house what i would do is cook it overnight and then you know put it in a, a container and take it to work with me sure. or when i was in the office the other thing i would do is i would take actually the 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 dry oatmeal to work with me and i had cinnamon and bringing bananas at my desk and i had i kept uh, almond milk in the in the refrigerator at, at the office and actually made it in the office. Um, so, that's, so, so is the water and fruit in the morning, is that number one? Do you have a couple of more quick ones? So the other thing that I'd recommend is uh, for, 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 for weight loss, eat a big salad before your meal. If you can eat plenty of veggies, if you want to lose weight, put, fill up half your plate with some type of vegetables, okay? I mean, it could be squash, zucchini, um, broccoli, cauliflower. I mean, just put ha half of your plate with some type of grilled and seasoned vegetables. Um, and what that does is it helps to keep you full. Uh, and it's, and it, it's got very low calorie density. And if you want to eat some meat with that, you're killing yourself, but I understand. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I understand, but make half of your plate vegetables. Well, okay. I think Pritikin said no more than three ounces a week, but the reason that he said that is because he didn't think he could stop people from eating it. 
That's right. And so what, so, and so three ounces a week is basically 5% of your caloric intake coming from animal based foods. Mm -hmm. And from all of the data that I've seen, 5% caloric intake, actually as much as 10%, uh, which is one serving of meat a week. Um, for those people who are healthy, uh, the data shows, you know, from the blue zones that uh, they do they do just as well. Sure. So the salad before the eating and, and, and half the plate of, of veggies, is there anything else or, or is that the three? Those would be the three that I would recommend. Oh, soups are also another good trick. Um, you know, black bean soup or, you know, a soup is another good trick. If you eat a bowl of, and there's a bit different types of bean soups or lentil soups, um, and, and, if you, and then if you eat a big bowl of soup before your meal, that's another one because mm -hmm. that will, that will start, that'll fill you up. And then you won't want to eat as much, you know, of, of your meat, you know, uh, and, and other, and other type foods. And so your caloric intake ends up going down because you get full. Uh, the nutritional content goes up because you're eating nutritional rich food. Um, and since it, since you're getting full, on food that has a low calorie density, then you end up consuming a lot less calories overall. That's super, yeah. You, you know, I, I downloaded um, recently uh, from, what was the website? Foodnotpills.com. Food, foodnotpills.com, get 25 amazing recipes. Yeah, so I was looking at this, there's some really good stuff in here. It really is, and, and they're all easy to do. Uh, and you can just go to, go to foodnotpills.com uh, and you can uh, download and, and get those recipes and you can start trying them immediately. I mean, and if you, you do nothing. You, you, you help people one-on-one. -on -one. Do you do that online or just in person? I, I do it just like you and I are talking right now. Oh, really? So how, like if somebody wanted to get a hold of you to find out more, how do they do that? Uh, they can, uh, you can email me or uh, call, uh, call me. Call me, 404-754-1700. Uh, okay. oh, Call me, Vince Ronja, call me. Hey, I, I heard you're on the uh, Michael Harris show and uh, <laughs> I want to eat more plants. And I'm like, well, I'm the man that can help you. I mean, <laughs> my, my, my job is fun, you know, because I, I get to see people get better. You know, imagine being a doctor and you've gone through all of these years of medical school and you go through all of these internship and you invested a quarter million dollars or more in loans and you get these people that have all of this sickness they carry in a plastic bag full of pills and month after month after month you see them they don't get better yeah. they don't get better you end up having to prescribe more pills and more pills why is that because the pills doesn't do anything to treat the cause if the cause is the food the only cure is the food so i help people change their food and then they need less and less medication some people get off their medication completely i mean you get to see people get better and they're like oh my god i don't have high blood pressure anymore i threw those wow. pills away yeah. i threw those pills away so and tell so me your number again it's 404 okay Seven five nine. Yeah. Five four six zero. Oh. Okay. That Do you will mind if if I post that, that be... underneath here too. Like when, no. when when we when I post this, it, it's it's in there as well. Sure thing. No problem. No problem. So they can call you, or you can email me at you can email me. Uh, yeah, you can get that at Food Not Pills, or you can email me at at Vince Vince Roundtree. Uh, the, my email is Vince at Food Not Pills. Ah, okay. Um, will they get your email when they download this too? Uh, I don't know. Well, they, that, that they will get into my okay. system, uh, but I don't think that, uh, they may get it. Yeah, they they should okay. get an email from me on that. Perfect. You 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 know Vince. Like I said, when we started the show, I feel like we could probably talk all day long about this. <laughs> and, you know, this is just really fascinating. And I would love to have you back again sometime and, you know, to maybe dive a little bit deeper into this. Are you willing to do that at some point? 
It would be an honor and a pleasure to do so. Well, let, let, let's do that <laughs> um, again. I, and I'm going to post this right away and, uh, both um, at the Facebook page, the Falling Up Secrets uh, Facebook page, as well as um, the Blog Talk Radio Falling Up Radio uh, page as well, so people can watch it or, or listen to the audio portion of it. Okay. So once again, go to Vince's website, download uh, 25 mouthwatering recipes that lowers cholesterol, blood pressure, and blood glucose, plus learn how Mark lowered his A1C from 10.5 to 5.5 and got off all meds. Yeah, Mark's story is amazing. Mark's yeah, story I, I noticed that that's right in front here. Where, yeah. yeah, he's uh, a friend of mine. about playing football and type 2 diabetic. Yeah, he, he, yeah. he played football at University of Michigan under the great Bo Schembechler um, mm -hmm. and uh, was in you know, great shape. And then, but, but family history of diabetes, like you would not believe. His mom mm -hmm. had diabetes and she needed uh, you know, a kidney transplant and his, all of his brothers, all of his brothers and sisters, and he had like seven brothers and sisters, all of them except for one had diabetes or heart disease and some of them lost, his brother lost his leg and mm -hmm. you know i mean le le leg amputation this all. and so when he got it you know he just figured well that's the family disease and uh and he found out about plant-based nutrition and by the time he found out he was on pills for high blood pressure for high cholesterol type 2 diabetes he has psoriasis erectile dysfunction he went plant-based and all this while he was like 41 42 years old he went plant-based in 60 days in 60 days he was off all pills. Totally all reversed everything. That's yeah. In 60 days. Like, wow. oh, my God. I mean, he's got these elements that literally killed his mother and severely damaged his uh, brothers and sisters. And he's off everything in 60 days. So, yeah. So, uh, I, he, he, again, he's a friend of mine. And, and so I, I told Mark I wanted to include his story in my material. And he absolutely gave me permission to do it. He's, he's a great, yeah. great, great guy. I, I, I love stories like that. And that's what this you know, show is really about, is about stories about people that have overcome some type of adversity or, or illness or health issue or what, whatever it might be, financial relationship, whatever, yeah. and found a, found a way to uh, really restore their life and to create a new life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just really amazing the power of plants and, you know, but many doctors don't know about it because there's the, the system doesn't encourage that they do that because there's no money in it. I mean, you know, there's a there's a lot of money in prescribing those high blood pressure. Oh, meds. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe that's a topic for another show. <laughs> I know that, that we can like talk all day about just that, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. The whole healthcare system model or we should say the sick care system. The sick care. Right. Yeah, where, where they just so, basically they so, need you to keep coming back in order to have a business yeah so, so let, let's look at doing that sometime um in the near future and uh diving deeper into that and i want to thank you again vince for your time and for being here and you know you have incredible insights and knowledge and wisdom about this and that's what one of the things that i i really love about you and the passion that you have for this so it's been really great to have you here and if you're listening to this, please share this video to anybody that you think that uh, could benefit from this, as well as the audio link. It, again, it's also on, on iTunes and post to it wherever you can. And again, say the website again. Foodnotpills.com. 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 And I'm going to give a, a, one little final plug, too, for my book, F Falling Down, Getting Up. And that's the website, fallingdowngettingup.com. You can get a, f a free book right there as well. So, uh, Vince, thank you again. Um, it's been a pleasure. Let's talk for 17 more hours again on, a, on another day <laughs> and dive really deeper into plant-based nutrition and really, you know, living a healthy, vibrant life. So um, thank you. Appreciate yeah, my, my, my pleasure. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.
while you're turning.